Oh, we've come down this afternoon, it's a Saturday, and uh, we've just come down to Puerto Portales. We've not been here for a while, and uh, it's now high season, so there'll be more people around, uh, a lot more boats are here, and uh, it's going to look a little bit different from the last time we're here. Hopefully we're going to see that the building work is finished, or at least nearly finished, um, so we're hoping to see quite a few changes as we, as we move, move around. So let's go. It's one of the smaller craft, but we've come to the area where the captain area is, the captain's office, and this is where we start to see the, the really big boats around here. Interesting to see the first two on this key. They've both got British flags. So at this time of the year, we get the the owners are coming out, and the people who are who are actually renting the boats for their holidays and go cruising around the islands. We quite often get some film stars, football players and the other rich and famous hire these and go out on their holidays from here. These are coming up, one of the rich and famous. <laughs> Pardon? I just said you were one of the rich and famous. <laughs> this is the Captain Aria, this is the offices that look after the port. For those of you who don't know, we've actually been on the island for longer than this port's been here. When we first came, Puerto Portales didn't exist. It was uh, built just after we started to live here. And it's been, uh, been popular with, uh, with those people who've got these big boats. It's always interesting to have a look to see where they've come from, or at least where they're registered. I don't know if any of them have actually been there. So another one from London, just come past one from Georgetown. Here's one from Malta. We're actually on Saturday the 19th of June 2021. Yes, we still have the pandemic and it's still affecting our lives, uh, but gradually less and less and uh, new rules come into force today, which allow us to meet in larger groups, allow bars and restaurants to stay open later at night, in fact, till two o'clock in the morning. So things are getting a little bit easier. Uh, they're going to experiment later on this month, in fact, next week. Going to experiment with clubs and going to do some trials to see what happens uh, when a club opens and whether there's a, an increase in the numbers and if there is uh, then they'll continue to be locked down and if there isn't then uh, they'll start to open them up a little bit more freely so it's a bit of an experiment and i believe there's something similar going on in the uk with a, a festival music rock music festival going on it's, uh, it's all an experiment and all the people are going to go in Hopefully they're going to have a great time, but hopefully they do realise that they're part of an experiment and they'll be monitored to see if they catch the virus, spread the virus, whatever. This used to be Tristan's and I now changed hands. Very exclusive dining place. I'm so impressed with the blue chairs, but uh, inside it looks very nice. This is the square in Puerto Portales. Years ago, we used to come here 
January, January the 5th, and we've watched the boat come in from here, bring in the Three Kings and bring in the presents to the children of Puerto Portals and Portals Nest. So it's where our children sometimes receive their presents. Here we've got Flanagan's, another very popular res uh, restaurant. We've actually seen the King of Spain, not the present King, the previous King of Spain, Juan Carlos. We've actually seen him dining in there. And some more of the nice big boats. As we walk along, um, I'm not going to go down the quays this time, but uh, uh, we, you can walk along the quays and you can look very closely at the boats and uh, do a bit of people watching. In front of us we've got Wellies, one of the very first uh, of the restaurants down here. It was opened by um, a friend of ours, Jeffrey Kenyon. Uh, we taught his children at school and got to know him over the years. Sadly he's no longer with us. Wellies is still here and uh, I suppose it's his legacy. So there are some shops down there. <laughs> Anita I'm sure is going to be tempted to go that way but we'll go this way. Always at the end of here there used to be a big yacht owned by the Sopwith family. Sopwith family are the ones that uh, had uh, made aeroplanes. The Sopwith Camel was a famous one and uh, people like Princess Margaret used to go on in years gone by uh, but the Sopwith family uh, were, were here quite a lot so here are some of the exclusive shops with exclusive prices so I discourage Anita from walk walking too close We did buy a pair of shoes this morning. We went to Festival Park, which is an outlet area, and she bought a pair of shoes. But they weren't for her, for one of our grandchildren. You had a pair? I had a pair of shoes as well. Real bargain. Box. <laughs> In front we've got Ritzy. down here a little bit. See some of the boats. We just had this muddy rain that gets blown over from the Sahara. The dust from the Sahara gets blown up into the air and a few spots of rain here. We've only had a few spots of rain. You can almost count them but um, when they land on your car or land on your boat uh, they just make a terrible, terrible mess. So uh, on the way here today, we called into the the car wash, and he was uh, arranged for one of these. You can see the mess it makes on the car. All the cars are covered in this dust that's been blown over from the Sahara. So today is a very warm, very humid day, um, but it's cloudy. It's a thin layer of cloud, uh, makes it very, very muggy. But we had to come out, we, we need to go to the shop, so I need to decide if we should come down to Puerto Portales. We just have a little walk along here. Here's Diablitos. I have promised that we will go to Diablitos. We haven't been there for a long, long time. And uh, someone from Diablitos has been watching one of the videos and uh, said we should call by and uh, yes we will and just look at all these bollards here I know some of you have been watching the videos and uh, on more than one occasion I've nearly fallen over one of these bollards not concentrating on where I'm going a lot of the businesses here are boat and yacht oriented so either looking after them buying them and selling them or servicing them
seen all the, the mud that's on these boats can keep somebody busy for an hour or two, giving them a good wash down with fresh water. And just before we came out, I was reading that uh, in the Calvia area, about half of the hotels are actually open now, but they're not very evenly distributed. So some places like Iljetas or Portals, where we are now, nearly all of the hotels are open. Five out of six, I think, in Iljetas and a similar amount, similar number here in Portals. Uh, few are open, quite a few are open in Palmanova, but when you get to Magaluf, the numbers start to drop off. And one that did surprise me, said five out of the 25 in Santa Ponza. Curiosity over here. Yes, five out of the 25 in Santa Ponza. So Santa Ponza is still not open. So it's a very interesting sculpture. going to do now is to walk to this new block which was brought to my attention by someone who'd been watching the videos and said can you go down to the port and and view and video the, the building work that's going on so I went to the church which is in Portals and took some photographs and took some video and I said I can't see any work and then I was told that it was around the corner and you can't see it from the church so when we came down there was a lot of building work and this is the result so it didn't look a few weeks ago as though this would ever be finished but here it is looking quite resplendent it's all painted up the locales are ready for people to come into to move into So, all the doubters that thought it would never get ready, it is ready. This is ready for the businesses here to move into. And they're still working on that side of the road, they were digging away. And there's still a big bulldozer digger of some sort over there, I can see. So there is still quite a bit of construction work over that side. Uh, over this side and there's some shop fittings actually going into that one if you've watched one of the earlier videos um, I uh, did go down into the underground car park and that quite shocked me the fact that you could have an underground car park here uh, because we're not really very much above sea level stairway here so there's obviously something above there uh, but there is and uh, just in front of us here you can see the stairs going down to the underground car park and there's in fact a lift just here and this now leads nicely into the rest of the, the port and here looks as though we might end up with uh, another water feature We've got an upstairs and a lower floor. Uh, I can it's see very light, in keeping, isn't it? lights on. It is in keeping. It's really looking very pretty. And this part here on the floor, this looks like fountains to me. I'll walk over it now, but it probably won't do next time we come because there will be water gushing out of them. So this is all coming to life. So those people who did doubt it, uh, it's happened. And I don't think it'll be long before some of the places here are open. In fact, one of them on the upper floor did have a light on inside and it did look as though it might already be open. So well, maybe somebody's doing some work in there. Still some things to be done. But it's the 19th of June. And uh, I think maybe by the end of June this will all be sorted. From the 1st of July, 
the Europeans, the European Union, are introducing a, a vaccine passport which will make it a lot easier for European Union members to travel uh, without having to quarantine or to have PCR tests. Uh, so all of the Europeans will, will have that. It's free, completely free, you just apply to your uh, here, it's to our local health authority and you can do it all online or you can just nip into the hospital and they'll print it out for you. I'm not sure how long it's valid for but uh, uh, certainly it'll be valid for the summer and then uh, you might need to get one later on, uh, particularly if we need to find we've got to have more vaccinations or, or whatever's going to happen after that. Um, but tourism within the European Union is already up and running. It's the UK and Ireland that uh, are the big problems at the moment. Um, so the UK are really struggling to come to terms with how this pandemic is going to pan out and uh, if you come here you've still got to go back into quarantine and have tests before you go back. It does seem though that you don't need to have the PCR test. Um, we spoke to Bev and Katie and they were going back with uh, an antigen test which is much cheaper it's only about 30 euros compared with the uh, 75 euros for the PCR test so it starts to make it all a little bit uh, more affordable the pain is the quarantine if you've got to go back and have 10 days of quarantine well if you're working that's pretty difficult um, but for me, for example, I want to go back and see my family. And uh, if I, I've got to stay in the house for 10 days, it means they've got to come and see me. So, not really a good idea. So, if there's quarantine, I will not be going back to the UK this summer. So, we'll, we'll see how it goes on. Um, things can change very quickly. And one thing that might cause it all to change is the... Uh, the cup, the football cup that's going on, the Euro 2020, 2021, well, 2020 postponed to 2021. Um, they want to have the final at Wembley, but if they're going to have the final at Wembley, they're going to have to allow 2,000 people to come in and without a quarantine. And if Boris allows them to come in, I can see there will be absolute uproar in the UK. And people will start to rebel uh, because it was obviously not fair, clearly not fair if 2,000 dignitaries from UEFA or whatever football association it is comes in, if they're not having to quarantine uh, then why should British citizens have to quarantine? So I can see that that could be interesting if he wants to have it He's going to have to change the, the rules uh, for the quarantine. So that's going to be very interesting because that's coming up in the next few weeks. The other thing, of course, is the traffic light system. The traffic light system is under review again. And uh, people here are still very hopeful that the Balearic Islands will be put onto the green list. And um, as someone noted on, on the government advice, you are not supposed to travel to Spain except the Canary Islands. The Canary Islands are not on the green list, but uh, there's no government recommendation of not to travel to the Canaries at the moment. Um, and the Canaries seem to have been more successful in uh, communicating with the British government. And obviously they're hopeful to go on to the green list. But if they go onto the green list, then there's a very good argument that the, uh, the Balearis should go onto the, the green list because we've got a very low, very low number of cases. The vaccination now uh, has exceeded 50% here in Mallorca, and so it is an extremely safe place. And now for the biggest bit of news. <laughs> See, as we walk past, people we're wandering around. People generally are wearing masks. Some of the tourists don't and they forget to. But while you're walking around, even in the open fresh air, you're supposed to be wearing a mask. Well, Pedro Sanchez, the Spanish Prime Minister, announced this week that 
as of the 26th, that's one week today, we won't have to wear a mask when we're out in the open air. So walking along here and walking along the promenade in Palmano or Magaluf, wherever we go, we won't have to wear a mask from next Saturday. Not today, so another week we've got to wait. Um, but that will be really good because the temperature now is reaching something like 30 degrees every day uh, and has been considerably higher. Wearing a mask when it's 30 degrees is very uncomfortable. This is only outside. As soon as you go inside, anywhere, you have to wear a mask. So if you go into a restaurant, you go into a shop uh, or any other public building where people from outside are allowed to enter, you have to wear a mask. Um, and that will continue for some time. I'm a teacher and I work in a school. Our children wear masks all day, uh, except when they're eating or drinking. And uh, that is planned to continue in September. And what they are going to allow in September is the seats are going to be allowed a little bit closer together um, because they found that in a lot of schools there's not actually enough room to get all the children in so some schools have had to stagger their openings so that uh, you can fit all the children into school at some point during the week well the current rules say they have to be one and a half meters apart um, from September that's going to be reduced to 1.2 meters so a 30 centimeter reduction hopefully will mean that they can get all of the children into the school all of the time uh, and that's the plan but still to be wearing masks at the moment that's the plan as well children here are also going to be vaccinated uh, possibly in August before they go back to school uh, but perhaps more realistically uh, when they're actually back at school uh, they will come around to the school and vaccinate the children when I mentioned this to some of my students they were saying do we have to have it or can we say no um, and I'm not sure what the rules will be here um, I'm guessing it's down to their parents who will say yes or no to the vaccine. Most of the teachers in my school have had their second dose of the vaccine and I'm still waiting. So I've still got another three or four weeks actually uh, to wait for my second dose because I had the AstraZeneca. Most people here are having Pfizer or Moderna. This lovely clean car. And I've just had my car cleaned to remove all of that uh, mud. Uh, I just give it a spray down so you don't actually go through the car wash. I just washed with one of these high pressure hoses, and that seems to have done a really good job because the clouds in the sky still look as though they might be full of that mud. So there's Marineland over there. Quite a few boats that don't go into the port but move the port outside and there's, there's actually i don't know if you can see it's a long way away but some one that's buried in the sand on the beach i bet the kids have a great fun with playing on that i know i would have done and i'm sure the grandchildren would that's our little tour of portable towels i should take my mask off now hope you've enjoyed watching uh if you have uh, then please share it with your friends, let everybody have a look and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. So bye for now. And I didn't buy anything, so we'll go shopping now. <laughs> Only for some food. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>